Hi, this is Paul, and welcome to part three in my iris tutorial series. And in this video, we're going to show you how to take the iris texture and put it onto a 3D object and then interact it with AE lights and camera. It's going to be great. It's my favorite one. Um, so if you're not familiar with this whole series so far, I'll show you what we did. In part one, we created this realistic iris texture. And in part two, I showed you how to link the size of the pupil with the length of the strands to create a dilation effect. So I'm going to pick up where I left off with the dilation comp and make my 3D eye based on that. So before we get started, let's look at a real eye one more time. So if you look at the whites of the eye, which I believe is called the sclera, I hope I'm pronouncing that all right, uh, you can see that it's not perfectly white. You have veins. There's a little bit of um, unevenness in the color of the white. So we're going to replicate that. So let's create a new comp. I'll call this sclera and a new solid. White solid, of course, for the white of the eye. To make it look more organic, let's add a fractal noise. And just a little bit, maybe like 5%. Just enough to make it look textured. Good. Now, let's add a black solid. And this is where we're going to add the veins. And I think the best filter to create veins with is actually a lightning filter. You can use AE Lightning or the BCC Lightning. They're both good. And what we're going to do is, first of all, shrink down the width of the bolt and make the color black. And then change the color of the glow to red. And then bring down the glow a lot as well, too. All right. So uh, one thing you have to keep in mind about lightning is that it's auto animating in the BCC version. So go into motion, change the speed to zero. It also uh, tends to flash a bit, which is cool. You might want pulsating veins in your eye, but I don't. So I'm going to turn the flash amount to zero and just to be safe, the speed to zero as well. Okay, now to see how this looks when it's composited, go to Apply and change the Apply mode from Normal to 50-50 Mix. All right, so we can see that it's a very strong red vein here. We don't want it that strong, so let's turn down the opacity here and here. Again, we just barely want to be able to see that it's there, and that's good. Now that we have the style of the lightning or vein set up, I'm going to change the type from sourced to two-way strike. And I'm going to add about five bolts. And then I'm going to increase the source radius and the destination radius to spread out where those bolts are. So again, keep in mind that this whole thing that you're seeing here is going to become a sphere. So you don't want to go overboard with anything on the edges. Uh, and that looks pretty good. I have a little bit of a bolt hitting the edge there, but that's all right. Okay, so that is the whites of our eyes. Um, and again, every eye is different, so you might want to go for something totally different there, but it's a good base. Next, let's bring in the iris comp I had before. I'll get rid of these keyframes first so that we don't com complicate our project any more than we need to. So as I bring this on top, we can see that it's way big. So let's scale that down. And we can also see that the edges are a little bit rough. So if I want to feather those out, I have a lot of options. I'm going to use a matte choker to do it. You could, of course, just use masks or any old trick you want. Um, I like the matte choker for this because it will let me keep some control over the style of the blending. All right, that's good. You could always do more iterations, more matte chokes if you needed to. But I think that's good for now. Next, we're going to pre-compose this whole thing and use this as our texture map. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, call it texture. 
Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to create the AE light and camera even before I have uh, the 3D filter applied, but that's done for a reason. So what I want to do is link the intensity of this light to the size of the pupil so that as I increase the light, the pupil will dilate. It's a really cool effect. Um, you could do it manually with keyframes, but it's just more cool to have it linked like that. So to do that, I have to drag my original comp 3 to the side here, and I have the move progress slider exposed, which is the one that drives the whole effect. So what we want to do is parent this to the intensity. So just alt-click on the stopwatch, take that pick whip, and connect it to the intensity of the light. Of course, because the light defaults at 100, and the move progress is not meant to go that high, we have to do a little bit of math to make the two values uh, coexist. And I think it works well to just divide the light intensity by 10. And since we do want a maximum value on the move progress, we don't want the eyeball to explode, I'm going to put 30 in here and subtract the I value. That'll also ensure that we get a nice uh, inverse relationship with the two. Okay, so closing that up. Now in this comp, if I increase the intensity of the light, we should see the pupil contract. And there it goes. So you might want to figure out what light intensity you want or need for your project to see uh, what values are, are good for that. So I'll just put this back to the default 100. And next we will create the 3D part of the scene, which is done using the BCC filter layer deformer, which is in the 3D objects category. Just put that on. By default, it's using uh, AE lights, but not cameras, so enable that. If I turn off the comp light just for just a second, it uh, might help us set up the effect better. Go into your Material tab and change Front Texture Layer to your Dexter, and there it is. So that looks cool. It looks nice in 3D with the lighting. Let's change the shape from Plane to Sphere, and now we can see that the eyeball is a uh, not fitting as we want it, so let's change the scale X and Y just to make it how we think it should be. And, and this part that I'm doing here could be, a, you know, you could plan for this when you make your 2D texture. Just in case it doesn't work out though, you can always just do what I just did. Alright, that looks pretty good. I'm leaving the iris a little bit bigger than maybe normal, but I like that. And now let's use the comp light. Nice. <laughs> creepy, creepy eyeball. Okay, another thing I want to do is to change the material options on this eyeball so that the AE light gives it a specular. So take that highlight parameter, change it to white. You can adjust the highlight amount as well in case you want more or less of it. But now we have a real catch light appearing on the eye. I'm also going to increase the render quality just to smooth out a little bit of that polygonal edge there. And that is good. And now you can kind of have fun, rotate around it, freak out your neighbors or whatever you want to do. Okay, and if we animate the intensity of the light, we can really get a cool dilation effect going on here. That's very intense. All right, that looks good. All right, now there's one more thing that we can do to make this scene stand out. Um, first of all, I'm going to add another light just to put some good fill in the background. Maybe a soft blue light. And also, um, if you want to change the ambient color of the texture, you can do that too. Just go to ambient and make it whatever color you want. You can even make it black if you don't want any ambient, or so on. We'll stick with the blue thing there. 
All right. So um, what I was saying, to get to the really stunning comp look here, we're going to add a filter to make these lights actually appear in our scene. And that's done with the BCC stage light filter, which again is new in BCC version 8. It's also been uh, upgraded significantly in terms of performance in version 8.2 and higher. So use comp light and camera. So I'm going to go into comp light, change some of the spot settings. Uh, first of all, extend the target. Maybe change the style um, from natural to weak or strong, depending on what you like. We could also add some smoke to make it look a little bit more uh, atmospheric, maybe not quite so much. And let's change that render mode. To anyway, so now as we go around our comp, we have real 3D lights appearing on our fun, insanely nightmarish eyeball. Okay, so that concludes uh, the 3D portion of the Iris tutorial series. I hope you liked what you've seen here. And if you want to do your own, I would love to see how yours turn out. Um, like I said, you can take this and go in many different directions with it. So please, be creative. And if you don't have the product already, well, you can download a free trial version at our website, borseffects.com.